Welcome to the Craig and Greg Show, presented by Maximize Leadership. Now, here are Craig Owens and Greg Harris. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Craig and Greg Show. I'm Craig. This is Greg sitting in our usual spots and hopefully dispensing the usual uh, level of wisdom. Do you ever feel like we set the bar too high for ourselves? I've bumped my head a couple of times on the bar and that hurt. So well, maybe. I know because you're just blowing right past all we the got, expectations. Push it huh? up, push, push it up. You know, as leaders, we have to have a lot of conversations at a lot of different levels in our organization. We might have to talk to our board. We might have to talk to people who are on the same level of as us. We might have to talk to some people that maybe report to us. There's a lot of conversations going on with people. Sometimes those conversations have to be about people. And we run a risk, I think, when we're talking about people, we got to be careful that we don't cross a line into gossip. Mm-hmm. So let's let's try to give some people maybe some things to think about, maybe just uh, some, I don't know that there's a perfect definition of this, this part is okay, but then this part you've gone too far. But we do need to be careful about that, that especially as leaders, when we're setting the example, we don't want to be gossiping about our teammates. We don't want our other team members gossiping. But sometimes we do have to have conversations about some of our teammates. So what have you experienced about that before? I think the one part about talking about someone, there has to be a goal at the end. Right. You know, like maybe they don't work with me, they work with you, and there's a situation we need to talk about. So how can we help them Mm -hmm. versus talk about them? Didn't that feel good? Let's go have another hamburger. No, you don't, you don't do it at their expense. You, you do it for their experience. Yes. That's what I've found. It's, it's, it's one or the other. It's not, you know, together, it's black and white. Well, and, and I think too, one of the, my experiences have been that people are really quick, leaders are Mm -hmm. really quick to come and talk about somebody. And usually my first question is, well, what did they say when you address this with them? Oh, well, I haven't really addressed it with them yet. Aha. Okay. That I think needs to be the first, make sure that your first conversation is to that person Mm. that, that you're trying to, you know, maybe get them to the next level. Maybe you're trying to correct a bad habit or something. I don't know, but have that conversation to them first before maybe you have to seek outside uh, counsel. I think both could work really well, particularly if you don't know enough Mm -hmm. to have a meeting with Mary or Billy and you're finding out, well, I I don't really know if that's the whole story, but to go put them on notice, like I'm going to go talk to you, another leader, and then, you know, we're going to gang up on Billy or Susie. That doesn't work. But sometimes I don't have all the information and I've learned the hard way in talking with them. You're like, oh, so I kind of gave them the clue we're looking at things or where there's a situation mm-hmm. they want to know more about that than actually helping us. But I think the real, the real key for talking about people or with people, um, first might be better. Like, I want you to know that that didn't go well. I'm going to, I'm going to ask around a little bit. I'll get back to you here in two days. And then you got to do that as a leader. You can't leave them hanging. Right. I mean, you're going to miss two nights of sleep and they're going to chew their cuticles. Um, but I think talking about them might be more research, uh, if it's gossip, there's really no saving that. That's just evil. You know? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think that, that sometimes people are hesitant in making that first step to talk to, to somebody because mm-hmm. well, how are they going to respond here? And so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bang a drum that we've banged a lot of times. <laughs> You have to be outside of your office, walking around, talking to your people. Yes. I think if you're, if it's just normal conversation, if people are used to you coming around, talking to them, then when you say, hey, we need to address something, it's not out of the ordinary. Right. Right. You know, it's kind of, it's when I was in school, when you were in school, um, and it's still the same today, when it comes over the loudspeaker, you know, Greg Harris to the office, please. <laughs> you know, everyone's like, ooh, you're in trouble. Yeah. You might be going down there. How did, but, you, how did you know that back then? Yeah. You didn't go to the same school as me. That's what happened to me. Yeah, but but it happens <laughs> every school. It's universal. It is, yeah. And, and um, that's what happens, unfortunately, in the workplace, too, when you come by and say, hey, Greg, uh, I need to see you in my office. Mm-hmm. You're like, and everybody else around you is like, ooh. But if the leader is just always out there walking yeah. around and, and just goes, hey, um, when you got a second, um, I need to chat with you for a quick minute. Then, oh, okay. 
Right. It, I Make mean, it normal. I, right. It's yeah. a normal conversation. I, th- I think that would be quite funny if we <laughs> introduce that to our office settings or manufacturing settings or job sites over the intercom. Would Craig Owens please come to the principal's office? I mean, wouldn't people just crack up like, oh, I had this when I was in elementary yeah. school. And again, you get the, ooh, yeah. <laughs> what did you do wrong? Yeah. I, I think... It would be kind of fun as a leader. Hey, would you, you, Craig, come to the principal's office? And it was a good thing. Yes. Absolutely. That would be fun. So, so instead of waiting for the negative, the hammer, the, you know, the, the issue, right. why don't you do the same thing the other way? Like flip the coin. Hey, um, got a good call. Come on in the office. Oh, hey, I got a call. Come on in the office. I mean, it would be very easy to use both. Right you know, the positive and the negative, but I just think it'd be hilarious to have in your employer, you know, over the intercom. Yeah. Would Craig Owens please come to the front desk? Oh, what did I do? And it just make it normal. I like the walking around part. Yes. Um, I, I do think sometimes our, our diabolical nature that we can drop into as leaders sometimes is I wouldn't mind just talking about this guy for a minute before I go address it. Yeah. Well, is that other person going to think highly of Billy? No, right. not the way we do it. Right. And that's the sad part. They, they're, we're going to actually hurt their reputation and their character yep. potentially, or even involvement right. in the company if we, if we do it wrong. But gossip is so darn easy. Right. I know you've had a couple cultures that you've, you've been a part of organizations and you're like, Whew, this is going to be difficult to make it a good experience if someone's, you know, because when you walk up, they're not talking. You're like, Okay, they were just talking about me. Well, and, and so this is my real simple definition of gossip is talking about something or someone on a level where nothing can be resolved. Mm. So um, good. W- it, it, I may as a if now hope, hopefully I've already been in a conversation with a team member. And if I'm still stumped on, OK, well, they they don't appear to be getting it or we're not making mm. any progress here. Right. I might need to talk about them to somebody else who has some experience. It might be a previous supervisor, or it might be somebody who's really skilled in HR or somebody that I think, hey, you're a really good communicator, and I think that my communication's not getting through, so can you maybe share with me an idea of, is there a different way I can approach the subject? I think I'm having that conversation, but it's so that it can fuel a better conversation to that person. I'm not just talking about them behind their back because I don't want to talk to them. Ooh. It's saying I've already talked to them and I, I'm i still struggling. It just doesn't feel like things are connecting. So let me go talk over here to get some help so, so you, I can come you, back. You brought up in the, some of the notes prior to this as we were planning. It's one thing to say I'm going to go talk to someone lateral just to get a little feedback on Billy or Susie. You also could say, you know, there should be, it could be a need to have maybe like a mentor, a coach, mm-hmm. uh, uh, someone come in and consult us right. on what do we do to make the situation better. I find my own experiences as well. If someone wants to talk about someone, they really don't want to resolve it. Mm. Yes. I don't have the capacity to carry all that. That's just what I've learned the hard way. But some love the, you know, hey, what'd you, what'd you find out today? Yeah. Well, it wasn't, they were looking for good. They were looking for bad. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Goodness gracious. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think the, the walking around, you know, why are you walking around is, is really a question. Is it walking right. around to get to know them or is it walking around to catch them doing something wrong? Right. And those are two different roles. But Absolutely. I think the constructive help you know, versus critical. You, you kind of spoke about that in some of the notes before this so that you could, there has to be a benefit to either talking with or talking about to talk with Yes. a constructive piece. Like a, let's, let's get them back on track right. versus, oh, that felt good to share a little dirt about them. You know, right. That doesn't go anywhere well. Well, I, and I, I like, um, Jesus talked about um, he, when he, he used his, the analogy of him being a shepherd and the people being a sheep. And he said, um, the sheep know the shepherd's voice, mm. which tells you that the shepherd is out among the sheep. But I think it's the same way. I, I think the shepherd knows the sheep's voice. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the reason why we walk around is because then you can catch something like off like wait i just heard them on the phone when i walked by they seem a little down 
or they seem a little agitated. Mm, you know, do I need good. to step in there? Um, so it, it's, and it's both. Then I want you to hear my vision. I want you to hear what, what I think. So I want you to know my voice. I want to hear your voice because I want to try to head some th- things off. And so again, I think if you're out there walking around and you've got your team's best interest in, at heart, you're trying to catch them doing something right, right, not something wrong, that when you do say, hey, there's something we need to address here, uh, that that they're ready to go. You know, like the, I don't know who said this first, I love this one, that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. So if people really know that you care about them, then they'll receive something from you, even if it's a hard word, right. even if it's a, a bit of a correction, yeah. they'll say, they might get initially upset, but then say, you know what, but that leader of mine has a consistent track record of always trying to hmm. help trying to. And so then I think that the conversations to that person with that person will flow much easier. If we can dabble a smidgen on like, there's, there's a reason to talk with or about someone to develop them. Part of it's, there's got to be a plan, mm-hmm. but it has to also be the ethos of your organization. Yes. You know, it's not about we're just going to go run people over with a bus. Right. It's we're going to pick them up with a bus. Yep. That's totally different. But I think that plan, have you had experiences where you're like, I don't know where this is going to go, but I have to have some sort of plan with this person, Billy, Susie, whoever it is. You're like, I, I don't want to ignore it. And I want to have an outcome where we can see them climb back out right. or whatever it happens to be. What is well, I, I think I think that has to start with the vision casting for the whole organization. Why is the whole organization here? What is it that we are going to do? What are we aiming for? What's our pole star that's keeping us on pace? Because then when you come back Mm -hmm. from that, then you can begin to identify behaviors that maybe don't fit into that. Um, You could say, I need to give some training so that you can help us move toward that Mm. goal that we're shooting for. So that's, I think that's where the the overall plan starts is what's the vision for the whole organization. Now, if your whole plan is just, hey, we're just here to earn money. We just want to crank out profits. That's all we care about. Well, then that means that your people that are there are just cogs in the machine. So you know, the value? so we could take this whole conversation, and just throw it out the window if that's the case. Right. But if you say no, our organization, yeah, we, we got to, we got to make money to, to keep moving this thing along. But ultimately this is what we want to do in our community. This is how we want to help our clientele that we yeah. work with. Okay. If that's the case, then I have to look at my teammates saying each one of them are an invaluable piece to make this happen. Mm-hmm. And if, if that's what I truly believe about them, that will come through in my interaction with them. Yeah. So even though I have to call you in or I have to kind of a, a one-on-one conversation with you about something that might be a little challenging, you know that it's because I care about you. Mm-hmm. The culture has to be something that people embrace mm. so that talking with or about actually makes sense right. to, to move the parade down the road. Right. If we're using it to, uh, I've been around a couple people that have used these talks as sort of the thumb. Oh, yeah. You know, we had this talk before. We did? Or even oh. go back over there. We've had the talk. Let me tell you the dates and times yeah, we had all we, these talks. I talked yeah. to your supervisor, your manager, and your vendor, right. and your customer. I mean, well, you've had talks about me, but you haven't actually right. talked to me. Right. There's where you, you, have, you have lost your leadership. Yes. Because they're, they're going to go, doodaloo, yep. I'm not listening to you. Yep. And I think the, the part about gossip it's i've been around a couple people and it's very uncomfortable even if you're not in the middle of it it really reduces trust Mm -hmm. and if you don't have trust even if we're giving them some truth they're like uh you, you you messed with me the last time you 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 shouldn't have done that or i know what you did to my buddy and he's no longer here yep. and so trust is so critical to avoid the gossip yep. trust is exponentially increased if we actually use this well yep so i think that's the part we have to, as leaders is don't don't get caught or hooked with that yeah it feels kind of good to talk about him he's been kind of a thorn in our flesh for a while well, it's on us then. Yes. Ab- for, for a while? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if we're not walking around and like, hey, Billy, I saw you do that again. Hit, what do you think? Yeah, sorry about that. All right. Well, then next time, you know, 
Maybe we don't say, I'm sorry about that. We'll just say, okay, what's the consequence? Sure. Which when you gossip, there is no consequence. Right. They don't know what to change. They don't know what they need to develop right. or correct. Right. And so we've really become not influential as a leader. Yep. Yeah. It's, well, so here's what I would say to you leaders is think about it this way. Do you want your team members talking about you? Or do they, do you want them come talking to you? That's good. That, you know, that's, we've got to, we've got to do it that way. And I, and I think here's, here's how I, I think I've handled it the other way. When somebody has come into my office Mm. and, um, you know, sometimes if they come in with their list like this, you're like, oh, you've been thinking about this for a while. Yeah, this, this dates right. back how many years? And so they come in and they say, I got some things to share with you and they share it. I always say this, thank you very much for sharing that with me. You've obviously thought about this for quite a while. Would you give me the privilege of thinking about what you just said? I, I jotted down a couple of notes here. Give me a little bit of time to process what you said. And can we get together at the end of the week? And and then I'd like to get back with you. I don't want to respond right now just off the top of my head because you've thought about it. So give me an opportunity to think about it. Well, then let's flip that around. If I go to talk to one of my team members mm-hmm. and I'll say, you know, now I've been thinking about this for a while and this might be new for you. Here's what I've noticed that... I, 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 I'd like to see a, a change or I'd like to see, help you with this. This is your first time hearing this. Right. I'm going to give you some time to process this. Um, so can you think about this and let's get back together in a couple of days and we'll, we'll talk about it more then. There's a slight spelling difference, but a response isn't quite as important as I like to be responsible in my response. Yeah. Like, so I want to be responsible first, not like yes. response, like yeah. just hammer him, you know, it feels right. so good to hammer him. It's like, oh, but he's broken now. Now, right. now what? Right. We can't put Humpty Dumpty back together. The gossip side helps us, hurts them. The talking with helps us as well because we're patient, we process, we don't get, well, three years ago, you kind of did something like that as well. And you're like, three years ago, who's keeping score? I mean, right. I, I don't even know if I played golf last week. But the transparency that I think handling this correctly, like we're trying to instruct here in content, transparency is, uh, you know, we've, we've all made mistakes, Bill, but, you know, this is, this is something that has come up. Can, can we come up with a plan here by the end of the week? What do you think? Right. You know, versus, oh, corrective action, we're going to decide what you're going to do. Well, there's no buy-in. He wants no. his job. Right. You want to help them create, and I'm, hopefully there's not a Billy listening to this because it sounds bad, but, you know, they, they want some respect in this piece. Yep. You know, uh, now sometimes you don't get, get that chance. You just like that. You cannot do that again. Oh, but sure. But that's different than right. like, how right. do you develop the person? Right. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of guiding, you know, as we're, as we're parents, we're kind of guiding, uh, when they get older, we're not really guiding when they're five. You say, no, don't cross the road unless you, you know, walk in hands and check both ways, et cetera. Uh, Oh, did, did you, did you do that again to the dog? No, you can't do that. I mean, it's, it's black and white, but this part here is really got, got some gray area about does that person have the ability to correct, right. you know, do, do they have enough talent to see it insight, to see it? It's a great privilege to be as a leader, like, all right, so just to, you know, let's just tweak this a little bit. I think it'd be way more effective as our, as one yep. of our teammates. And, and I find that very empowering to put the ball in their court first. Yes. I, I remember a time that I, I had to call in a couple of guys into my office and I just said, Hey guys, listen, this is what I've noticed that's going on. I see it with you and it's becoming a, then an kind of an instigation uh, in your whole department. I'd like you guys to come back to me with a plan of yeah, how, how can, how can you correct this? And what I appreciate um, was one of the guys came back to me pretty quickly and he had a piece of paper and he had written down a couple of things and he said, you know, I guess I don't really, I, I realize the need for, for a change and I don't, I don't really know what to do. And I said, well, would you be open to, um, I said, cause I can think of this book off the top of my head. How about if I get a second copy, you and I read it together and talk about it. I think this book is right. You know? And he said, yeah. And I'd be open to that. The other guy came back and he had a very detailed plan written out. He said, I'm, mm. I'm, I'd like to do this and, the, and and I didn't have to meet with him like on the regular one-on-ones. Mm. I just said, let's just check in periodically. Right. 
And so that's everybody's going to respond in a slightly different way, but they feel empowered because you, they're not like, like to use your analogy, wait a minute, I'm not five. You don't have to tell me what to do. I'm, I'm an adult here. Yes, that's how I want to treat you. I believe that you can come up with a plan and I want to help walk through this plan with you. Maybe um, go down memory lane with a story. I'm not sure exactly if this was maybe a camp you directed or maybe this is something I remember. Maybe it was Joy Youth Center. We'll find out here in a minute. Where we would say, hey, you know, so-and-so, you can't do that. You can't talk that way. You need to respect blah, blah, blah. Uh, here's your punishment. Now, we're the adults. That's a, that's a youth. You, you get three youth together and say, come up with a penalty for him or her. They're doozies. Yeah. But then I, I think it was, we had to ask them, okay, so if you were in their shoes and you had three peers coming up with a doozy of a punishment, I'd be fine with it. No, I wouldn't want that. Okay, so we got to bring it down a little right. bit. I love it when they have a little say in it. Absolutely. Because it, it's not a test. It's an indicator. Yes. Like, yep. do they get it? Are they in it? And uh, there's there's a quote that's kind of interesting. Gossip yeah, like is this. easy to state. It's heavy to carry and hard to stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we do that as leaders or you see it in a meeting. I've I've unfortunately let it go where we started to kind of ruin the person's reputation around the table. They weren't there. And then other times we're like, hey, you know, it would be better for us just to call them in and say, let's meet, you know, because we, we're pontificating and guessing, uh, but we can come up with it. But if they're not participating in it, all we're doing is giving them assignments. Yep. Yep. And really what we need is we need to develop them. And I, I think that is just one of my favorite words for leaders is developing Ab others. Absolutely. Some sort of cool sentence, and, but it's, yeah. Tr and trusting that they are going to get better. They're going to receive that. Right. And, and they, they don't... Some people need a hammer. Most people love carrots. You yeah. know, hold it out there, motivate them. Uh, the, the hammer is almost like we've tried the carrots three times and now we're doing hammer. But maybe at that point they'll, they'll come up with their own reason to leave. But I, I, I love the, the title, you know, talking with and, and talking about. They're, they're really not the same. No. And as, as leaders, we don't want people talking about us either. Right. We'd want them to come to us and say, hey, you know, I got an idea. Would you have five minutes? But uh, it's just a privilege to be in leadership. And um, it's very tempting to gossip. Yes. Um, but there's no plan in either. You right. Know, so. Well, leaders, listen, it, it is, a, as Greg said, it is a privilege to be a leader, but with those privileges come responsibilities mm -hmm. on the other side of that. And we want to help walk you through this. Maybe you're at a spot where you're struggling a little bit. Boy, I've got a, a teammate and, and I, I just don't know how to handle this. This would be a great place to bring in an outside coach, uh, somebody who's not on your team. They're not emotionally invested. And if you share with a coach what's going on in your team, it's not going to impact that other person's reputation or, or hurt them that way. So if you want to go to Maximize Leadership, we have a great page on there about coaching. You can see some of our coaches and their areas of, of expertise, but especially down at the bottom of the page, just fill out the form there. Say, here's my situation. Here's what I'm struggling with. And then we can help match you up with a coach that can help you walk through this. We want you to really grow and excel as a leader because we know that when you do, everybody around you is going to get better. The whole community is going to get better. And so if we can continue to raise up leaders, we're going to see everybody get better. So follow us on, on YouTube. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe and, and click the bell so you're notified. We've got these full-length episodes of the Craig and Greg Show. Greg's got some periodic uh, max minutes some real quick hitters for you that are going to help you with your leadership as well. And we want to make all those resources available to you. So reach out to us in other ways as well. And let us know if you got questions, comments, topics that you'd like us to cover. We want to be able to help you out. Stay tuned. Lots more great stuff coming your way soon. Get in touch with Craig and Greg through Twitter at Maximize Podcast or at MaximizeLeadership.com. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes of The Craig and Greg Show.